Hey guys, as you can probably tell, it's pretty cold out here, but I'm nice and warm because of these two jackets from Marmot. That is the KT component jacket that I'm currently wearing, and also the Featherless component jacket, which I have right over there, and I'll throw one in a few minutes. Now these jackets do have some differences, and we're gonna discuss them, uh, but they also have some similarities as well. What they have most in common is that they're a component jacket. So they have an outer shell and also an inner liner. So it makes them really versatile and great for a lot of situations. If you want some great deals on jackets, outerwear, electronics, uh, you know, outdoors type stuff and sporting goods and all that, make sure you head over to betterlifereviews.com. I'm doing a ton of work over there, throwing up some daily deals from people like Moose Jaw, Amazon, Backcountry, and lots of other retailers to get all the best deals in one spot. And also have some great reviews, comparisons, and all that stuff. So make sure you check out betterlifereviews.com. So let's get into it. All right, so like I said, both these jackets have both an outer shell, which is gonna protect from wind, rain, and snow, that kind of stuff, from the elements, and also an inner liner, which is gonna add that warmth factor. So they're really versatile jackets. So how these jackets kind of stay together is that they have a little loop here on the inner liner, and then a snap that snaps from the shell to the liner. And then they also have a zipper that runs here. It's a special type of zipper that runs you know, along here, and then you just zip out the liner on these jackets. So pretty cool in the fact that they kind of stay together. You can wear just, you know, of course, an internal liner and a shell over top of it. Uh, but when you're taking it off and that kind of stuff, it's going to tend to separate. Uh, so it makes it convenient to have those two joined together. The jackets both do have a synthetic insulation as well, but it's different. So on the KT component that I have on now, this has an outer shell that has a Gore-Tex membrane. Uh, so that's going to, you know, repel all the water and that kind of stuff, but yet remain breathable and it has a Protex Quantum as the outer shell material. So it's a really durable, but yet breathable fabric. And then internally on the liner, it has uh, what Marmot calls their Thermal R insulation. So that's a synthetic insulation. Um, it is in a baffle style, but however, the baffles are gonna be uh, thinner. It's quite thin, the jacket. It does add a, you know, a, lot, a fair amount of warmth. Uh, if you're looking for more of a lower profile jacket internally for the liner, uh, then it's gonna be a good liner. However, if you're looking for more of a thicker, you know, puffier jacket, uh, then you would look for the featherless component jacket. So that, that jacket there, uh, the outer liner is going to be what Marmot calls their membrane. So Marmot membrane is the, uh, the breathable membrane there. And they say that it's at least 10,000 mm waterproof. And then internally, it has uh, 3M featherless insulation. So where this is more of a, a thinner sheet insulation on the KT component, the featherless insulation is actually a loose fill synthetic insulation that's going to fill the baffles and it's going to resemble typical down. It's actually made to mimic down. So they say that it's as warm as 700 fill power down. So it is quite warm. Uh, and I would say that the featherless component jacket is going to be warmer than the KT component jacket. So here it's about 20 to 30 degrees Fahrenheit or about zero to maybe negative five Celsius. And I do feel pretty warm in this KT component, this kind of standing here. Uh, and it's not even up to my neck or anything. So I would say that the KT component is probably good down to about 20 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, especially if the hood's up and all that. But the featherless component is definitely going to be a warmer jacket. It's going to be uh, more puffy. Uh, and great for those really cold environments. So I've worn a jacket down to around 10 degrees Fahrenheit, and I've been very comfortable in that jacket. Um, like I said, they both are gonna be resistant to the elements. This Gore-Tex membrane, um, this two-layer membrane, it's probably gonna be a little bit more resistant, I would say, although I don't have any you know, specific data on that to say, um, but they both are highly resistant to the elements. If you guys don't know, the advantage of synthetic insulated is that um, this does much better in wet type environments. So traditionally, down is going to use to insulate. Down is excellent in terms of its warmth to weight ratio. Uh, so it's going to be very light. It's going to pack down very small, and it's going to stay very warm even when it's cold based on its weight. Um, so where synthetic insulation typically doesn't do as well as down, but where it really excels is when you get wet. So um, if you're out, you know, in rain and that kind of stuff, or even if you're sweating a lot internally, can really saturate those feathers in the down and then it down clumps down and it becomes very inefficient. It loses about 90% of its thermal efficiency um, and it's just not going to stay warm in those environments. So that's really where synthetic insulation excels. And with uh, things like this jacket here, where they're making loose fill synthetic insulation to resemble down and to trap that air, you really kind of have the best of both worlds. So you have a jacket that is going to be resistant to moisture. It's going to perform better you know, in more uh, rigorous or athletic type environments but it's also going to keep you very warm as well. So pretty cool. Now it can be a little bit confusing to tell these jackets apart, being that they're both made by Marmot and that they're both a two-part jacket. But there are some differences. Like I said, the shells and the liners are different and also kind of their intended use. When you kind of dive into you know, what they have available, you can see more of their intended use. So 
Jackets are both made to be, you know, an outdoor type jacket to be resistant to the elements. I uh, can use for um, athletic type stuff, but on the KT component, it has a couple of unique features. Another feature of this KT component jacket is that it has a pass um, pocket here. So you're gonna zip this open and put like a ski pass in there, uh, which already kind of tells you that it's made more for skiing or snowboarding. This also has a powder skirt uh, on, the, uh, on the outer liner there. Now you do need to separate the outer jacket from the internal liner and then the powder skirt is actually on the inside uh, snapped to the liner itself. So basically what you have to do is wear the internal liner zipped out if you want to wear the liner, uh, zip it up the whole way, then pull out the powder skirt and you can wear that separately. So you can wear both jackets, they're just not going to be worn as a component type of jacket when you're wearing it in that configuration with the powder skirt. Now on the featherless component jacket, uh, there is no powder skirt and there is no pass pocket, um, but they both do have a fair amount of pockets otherwise. So on the KT component here, you have uh, these two pockets here. Now that is unique. Um, these pockets do not come on the featherless component jacket, uh, so they're unique here to the KT component. So you have two jackets up, pockets up here, you have two pockets on the bottom, and then there's also one uh, internal pocket on this jacket as well that is vertical. Now as far as these pockets go, the thing I don't like about it, and actually one of the major reasons I decided to keep the featherless component, is um, the size of the pocket. So the pockets on this jacket are a little bit smaller. Uh, they actually sit a little bit lower uh, for these bottom pockets. So on the, uh, the featherless component, they have a larger pocket and that is uh, important for like storing my phone, which is kind of a funny problem. Um, but to me, it's very important. I'm using this more for, for casual use a lot of the time. Um, so a larger phone, like I have a Galaxy Note 9, it doesn't fit very well into this KT component pocket. It will fit in there, uh, but it has to really sit more like vertically. And I try to turn it horizontally, it doesn't fit very well. Um, so then when I'm sitting down, it gets a little bit uncomfortable and that kind of stuff. Now there is an internal pocket in this jacket um, on both the shell and the liner. You can stick your phone in there and if that's not a big concern to you, then it probably is not concerning, um, but it is one difference. So here you have, again, you have two pockets here, two pockets down here. These are hand warmer type of pockets, so they're nice and warm. Uh, they're lined with like a microfiber type of fabric. And then internally on the liner, you also have two hand warmer pockets as well as an internal pocket. So you have lots of pockets there. Um, the only difference is that on the featherless component, it does not have these two pockets, but it has two pockets on the bottom that are larger and are better for fitting um, larger phones. And then on the featherless component, it does not have the pass pocket and it does not have the powder skirt. So as far as other features go, these two jackets are nearly identical. Uh, they both have a zip off storm hood. So the storm hood can be removed if you don't want it. Um, however, it's a really nice hood. Um, it's gonna keep out those elements. And um, it has some nice adjusters here in the front. So you can just uh, pull it through and lock it in the position that you want for the hood. And that's gonna make the hood cinch down around your face. Uh, both hoods are also helmet compatible. They're really an identical type of hood. And you can have a string on the back where you can pull it to tighten it around your head. So it's very highly adjustable, this hood. Um, in comparing these jackets to something like the Patagonia jacket, Patagonia 3-in-1 Snowshot jacket, uh, I do like a jacket a lot, and I'll link it down below as well. However, there's a couple reasons that I like these jackets more than the Patagonia Snowshot jacket. On the Snowshot jacket, first of all, the liner is kind of thin. It is a fairly warm liner, um, and it is made more for snowboarding or more of an active type environment, so it's more similar to this KT component jacket. Um, but one thing I didn't like is that I felt that the liner um, this didn't really fit my body very well. It was very loose um, around the neck. It felt very loose as well. And when you uh, pull down the things to cinch the hood, uh, the, this um, string kind of just like hangs down. I didn't like how it hung, hung down. Also, if I'm correct, on the uh, Patagonia 3-in-1 Snowshot jacket, on the internal liner, there's not an adjustable hem. So it's going to kind of hang loose. Um, that's been shown to really let a lot of air in. Um, and really to reduce the thermal efficiency of that liner. So it's actually really important that the internal liner also has an adjustable hem as well, in my opinion. I um, mean, you do have that on both the KT component and on the featherless component. So those are kind of some differences um, as compared to other jackets out there, um, being the Patagonia jacket. There's also some jackets from um, North Face as well. But in my opinion, the ones from uh, Marmot kind of have an edge in, the, in those factors. Um, but it really depends on personal, personal preference. So I will have some links down below as well for those other jackets if you want to check them out. Another feature that both jackets has is that they have an adjustable cuff. Uh, so the cuff is compatible with gloves. It can go over top of this glove, which is a pretty large glove, as you can see. And then you'll cinch it down using the Velcro around the glove. It also can, of course, be cinched down around your wrist and then a glove can go over top of it if you would prefer to have it that way. Something else you might not think about and something I kind of give the KT component a ding is this little uh, storm flap here. So this goes underneath where the zipper is and it's gonna protect you know, the wind and that kind of stuff and the water 
from getting in through the zipper. Now the zippers are also both waterproof zippers on both jackets. Um, but here, this is gonna kind of hang loose. And when it's up against your chin and you move your chin, it kind of tends to move back and forth. It can be a little bit irritating. It can kind of like just sit there and, and move around. And also it's a little bit cold there. Um, where on the featherless component, it has this, this little tab that kind of wraps around the top and it keeps the storm flap in place. So it's kind of a very small detail you might not even think about, but to me it's actually kind of an important detail. Um, I definitely prefer the way that it is on the featherless component jacket. So this is the Marmot featherless component jacket. As you can tell, it's a little bit thicker and puffier than the KT component, and that's because the liner is a thicker liner. Um, now this jacket comes in a black, of course, and so does the KT component, but they also come in several other colors. There is a women's version of the featherless component jacket. However, there's not a women's version right now of the KT component jacket, so that's more just unisex. There also is a third jacket, which is sort of similar, called the Shushing Featherless Jacket. And that jacket actually has that 3M featherless insulation that this jacket has. Um, however, it's not a component jacket, so it's just a one-piece jacket. However, it does have a powder skirt and some of those more ski or snowboard features uh, that the KT component has. So there's three different jackets, uh, all kind of made for their own you know, individual use and purpose case. As far as sizing goes, uh, this is the Featherless Component Jacket in a size extra large, and you can see how it looks. So, I do have a semi-thick underlayer in this jacket. Uh, I do have a 45-inch circumference chest, and I weigh about 220 pounds, and I'm about 5'10", so you can kind of base on that. I can wear the large jacket in both the featherless and the KT component jacket, and it fits fine. Um, it's a little more snug, which might be good for, you know, someone who wants a snugger jacket. But the difference in that is that, you know, it's not going to be good for if you're layering something underneath it, and also it's not going to be good, um, you know, if you want that kind of more range of motion in the shoulders. So on this jacket here, I have a, you know, a good range of motion through the shoulders, even more so if I don't have something underneath it. Uh, where on the large jacket, it was a little bit limited in that range of motion. And considering that I might be using this for snowboarding and that kind of stuff, I wanted to have more range of motion in the jacket. All right, so which jacket is better? Well, neither really. It just depends on what you want. So as you can probably tell by what I said so far, the KT component jacket is slightly more geared towards the skier or snowboarder, right? It's got that powder skirt, it has the pass pocket, um, it has a thinner liner which is not going to keep you quite as warm, but it will still keep you warm. But it's going to be good, you know, if you're walking, if you're doing a lot of walking through stuff, um, trekking, if you're walking up top of a bowl, if you're doing some hiking, that kind of stuff, more adventurous things uh, where you're expending a lot of energy, then probably that's going to be plenty of insulation for you. And if it's not, you can layer underneath it. However, on the Fedless component jacket, this is more of a jacket that can also be used for athletic type stuff and all that, but it's going to have that thicker liner. It's going to be a little, a little more bulky, uh, it's also going to be a little bit warmer as well. So if you live in a very cold climate or you just kind of run cold like I do and you really want to be warm, um, this jacket I really love, the Featherless Component Jacket. Um, I've used it, you know, as low as said, is about 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Been very warm, super comfortable. Um, I love the features of this jacket. It's really just an excellent jacket. These jackets are both pretty cool in that if you get them in the black, in my opinion, um, they can be worn pretty much anywhere. Uh, now you don't want to wear them probably to like a wedding or something like that, but they can be worn to dinner, I think. They can be worn casually. Um, they can be worn, you know, to work. They can be worn anywhere. Uh, but yet they also are a very high-performing jacket as well. They have a lot of tactical features. So they're really, really unique. And the fact that they can be zipped apart, you know, and they can be used. It's more of a rain jacket style. You can zip it apart and use just a liner. It's more of, you know, a lighter kind of thing when it's not raining outside. Or you can wear it both together. So it's really cool. So two awesome jackets from Marmot. Um, drop the links down below if you guys want to check them out. And I will see you next time. Any questions?